Hey, you cowboys and cowgirls. Here we are in unit two. This is gonna be all about systems. So in 2.1, we're talking about the systems of equations. How do we solve those systems of linear equations? So um, as you know, a system of equations is solved by finding the intersection of those equations. It's the intersection of those equations. So for a system of two linear equations, there are three possible cases for the solution. So I need you to think about having a graph with two lines on it. There's three things that could happen. The first thing is that they could cross, right? The two lines could cross and you would have one solution. And that one solution is where the lines intersect. Okay, what else could happen? you could have no intersection at all, which means those lines would be parallel. So you could have no solutions when those lines are parallel. And if you wanna use the symbol for parallel lines, it kind of looks like an 11. Um, that's just some geometry flashback for you, but those lines are parallel. And so obviously they're not intersecting, so you wouldn't have a solution there. If you were working this algebraically, then you would get something like a, um, a false statement. You would get a false statement. And what do I mean by that? That means something like zero equals seven or five equals one. That's not a true statement, which obviously means that it's false. Therefore, there are no solutions. Okay. So then what else could happen? They could either cross, you'd get one solution. They could not cross and you get no solutions. What's the third thing that could happen? What if they are on top of one another? What if they are the same line? And if that's the case, you're going to have infinite solutions, right? Use that symbol for infinity or write out the word. Infinite solutions will occur when the lines are the same. There is a word for that. Um, you probably have never heard of it before, but it's coincidal. Coin. Wait, coin. Hold on. Coincidal, coincident, co co coincidental. Whew, my math teacher, not an English teacher. Don't, don't slaughter me. All right, they're coincidental. Yeah, incidental, coincidental. Okay. And so when that happens, um, graphically, you're going to see that they're the same line. They have, you know, everything the same. So infinite solutions. Algebraically, you're going to get that true statement. You're going to get that true statement. Example might be 4 equals 4. That's my favorite number. All right. So whatever. So that's, like we said, for a system with two linear equations, two linear equations, there are three possible cases. One solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. Okay. So we're going to be working with two by two systems right now, which means two equations, two variables. Now, what are some ways that we can solve systems of equations? Oops, sorry. There are four ways to solve systems. First one, graphing. Graphing is going to be the easiest when both of your equations are already solved for y. Um, so like, you know, in that y equals mx plus b format, that's going to be really easy for us to go ahead and just graph those equations. So um, when both equations um, are solved for y, um, yeah. All right. What's another way of solving a system of equations? We also have substitution. Substitution is easiest um, when one of your variables is already isolated. So one variable is already isolated or, or easy to get isolated, right? It's already, let me put, it's already isolated or easy to isolate. It's already isolated or it's easy to isolate. I don't know if that's going to make sense or not, but okay. Um, okay. 
there's a third one that most of you know, and that is elimination. Elimination is easiest when we're in standard form or when one of our variables are already gonna cancel out or it's an easy like cancel if I multiply one of my equations by a negative one or by two or something like that. So it's easiest when it's in standard form. Remember standard form AX plus BY equals C. Um, when one variable already cancels or an easy multiplication. I know I'm writing kind of small, I'm sorry. All right, so typically that's what we've been thinking of when we solve systems. We can graph it, use substitution or elimination. There actually is one more way that we can solve a system of linear equations. You may have learned it in algebra one, you may not have, and that's gonna be matrices. Matrices, matrix is plural. So matrices are easiest when we have a messy three variable uh, systems. Okay, so we're not even gonna touch on matrices today because today we're only dealing with two by two systems, two equations, two variables. Graphing, substitution, elimination is where it's at for that. Matrices we will get into later on um, when we do dive into those three by three systems, three equations, three variables, and it's really ugly, we'll throw it into a matrix. Most of the time, we'll let the calculator do all the work for us then, okay? So I wanna practice those first three um, ways, graphing, substitution, and elimination. So example one, notice it says solve by graphing, and I break it down in example one, two, and three so that we're forced to use each method of solving that system. Notice in example four, it says solve by any method. So this is where you really need to understand just by looking at it, what would be the easiest method for you to solve? It might be different for someone else, okay? So like I said, the first one, we're gonna force you to use graphing. So if I need to graph something, the easiest way that I can graph something is if that equation is in the format of y equals mx plus b, that's slope intercept form, where m is my slope and b is my y intercept. In example A, I'm noticing that it's not in that format already but I'm not gonna give up because it's easy for me to turn it into that format. So that system, um, to solve for y in the first equation, I can go ahead and subtract my x over, but then I would have to divide by that negative, so I'm gonna end up getting y equals x. For the second equation, all I need to do is subtract that two x over to the other side, so I'm gonna get y equals negative two x, plus three. Now that I have it in y equals mx plus b, that slope intercept form, it's extremely easy for me to solve, I'm sorry, to graph, and here we go. So y equals x, that has a slope of one and a y intercept of zero. So it's going through the origin, positive one slope. And so I just notate my dots and then I can connect them. And so here is that first equation, y equals x, and the second equation has a y-intercept of positive three and a slope of negative two. So I could go up to left one or down to right one and continue that slope pattern. And then again, connect my dots. Oops, not perfect that time, but here we go. So we have two lines here. Do we have um, a solution? Yes, how many? One, what is that solution? It's where those lines intersect, which is at the point one comma one. Two lines, they intersect, that's one solution. What is that solution? That point of intersection at one, one. Okay, now I go to my next problem. Lucky for us, it is already in slope intercept form and some of you are immediately noticing something about those two equations. They have the same slope. 
but they have different y-intercepts. So right now, you should be able to tell me if this has one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions based on this information. I'm gonna go ahead and start graphing so we get that visual because that's what example one is all about, graphing and getting that visual. So I'm gonna start with the first one here, 3x minus three, y-intercept of negative three, positive three slope. So here's that first line. And then the second line, y-intercept of one, positive three slope. Do we have a solution? No, no solution because these were parallel lines because they had the same slope. So parallel lines, same slope, oops, slope, different y-intercept. If they would have had the same y-intercept, then this would have had infinite amount of solutions because it would have been the same line. It would have been the line on top of it, um, the other line and it would have been the same infinite solutions, but they're parallel, so no solutions. All right, going into substitution. So remember substitution we said was easiest when you have a variable already isolated, so you can just simply um, plug it into the other. Remember substitution is plugging it in. So what I see in example A is that my first equation is already solved for y. The variable y is isolated. So that means I could take all of this, what y is equal to, and plug it into the y of the second equation, getting 2x plus 4x plus 1 equals 37. And now I can solve this equation for x. Once I get that value of x, I can plug it into either equation and solve for my variable of y, and that will give me my solution, the x value and the y value. Remember, solutions to systems is where the, the lines intersect. So that intersection point is some x comma y. It is an ordered pair, okay? So, all I need to do is solve for x. I can combine like terms, get 6x plus 1 equals 37, 6x, oops, equals 36, x is 6. Awesome. I have half of my answer. Cannot stop here, guys. Cannot stop here. I take that x equals 6, and I either plug it into my first or my second. Okay, it doesn't matter. However, what do you think would be easier here? I would think be plugging in into the first one because I already have that y isolated. So I don't have to move anything around. All I have to do is simplify. Four times six is 24 plus one is 25. So y is 25. So what's the solution? Six comma 25. All right. And like I said, if you plugged it into the second equation and you simplified and solved for y, you would have gotten the same answer, okay? Going to the next one, part B. Again, we're still, I'm forcing you to use substitution. So it doesn't matter which one you solve for a variable. If I'm looking at the first example, it would be easier to isolate the y. But if I look at the second example, it is way easier to isolate either the x or the y. So I'm not even gonna deal with the first equation. I'm gonna focus on the second equation, pick a variable, isolate, and then plug in, then use that substitution piece. So if you wanted to isolate your y variable, all you would do is turn that into y equals nine minus x. If you wanted to isolate your x variable, then that would turn into x equals nine minus y. And then you would plug into that equation, you know, according to what you solve for. I'm gonna go ahead and solve for a y. So this means I have y equals nine minus x. And if you can hear my washer in the background, I am sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take this nine minus x and I'm gonna plug it into this y right here. So now I have three x minus, open up that parenthesis, nine minus x equals negative five. Super important that you, when you're using substitution, that you put um, what you're substituting in parentheses because of cases like this. It is so important that we distribute that negative and this becomes 3x minus nine plus 
x equals negative 5. So many of you are going to forget to distribute that negative, and it's going to F everything up for the rest of the problem. So be very careful about that, okay? So in combining like terms and solving for x, I could get 4x equals, I'm going to add that 9 over. So negative 5 plus 9 is going to give me 4. So that means x is 1. Great, wonderful. I'm not done. That's just half of my answer. So I know my answer is going to be 1 comma something. Now that all I need is that y value, how about I just plug my x in right here? y equals 9 minus x. Well, what's x? It's 1. So what's y? 8. So now I know my solution is 1 comma 8. Okay. Moving on to example 3, we're solving by elimination. 